This program is brought to you in part by SalCal Real Estate Connections. Yes, they are jitterbug. I mean, yes, we are back at the Kleinberg Family Center Concours de Elegance. And boy, I'll tell you, this is round two. And uh, we're going to be interviewing uh, Jesse, who, who uh, restored this beautiful 1925 Buick. Yes, we have Jesse Morton with us, who had the opportunity to restore this absolutely gorgeous 1925 Buick Model 40. And I bet you by now you know a little bit about this car, Jesse. Yes, I do, yeah. We, uh, we had it all apart right down to the frame, and uh, we made the uh, whole wooden buck for the body and reskinned it and rebuilt the engine, the whole drive line, uh, did everything, nut to bolt, and uh, back to its original uh, factory uh, specs. Now, was this the original color? Yes. yes. Just like it was, huh? Yep, just like it was from the factory, right down to the pinstripes on the body and the wheels. This car is gorgeous, I I'll tell you. Now, the people that own this car, where are they from? From Florida. Really? Yeah, Mr. Uh, Steve and Evie Snell. They're from How'd they track you down? Um, they, they saw a uh, picture of another 25 Buick Phaeton that I owned and restored in the AACA National Book and uh, that was at Hershey. And, uh, and uh, they, uh, they, you know, called me up and uh, got some uh, referrals and uh, talked to me and had me restore the car. Uh, we specialize in Buick. Restoration and all classic car restorations. We have a half a dozen cars we're building right now for different people from all over the country. You have a website people could go to? We do, yeah. It's Academy Classic uh, Automobiles. Yep. Now tell me, what kind of motor does this car have? It has a uh, straight six, master six in it, and uh, with an updraft car uh, carburetor and uh, electric start. It's a great running car. Now, I mean, a car like this uh, was really kind of an upgrade from a regular car at the time, right? Yeah, it was a higher, higher class car. Yeah, they, uh, they're a much bigger car, you could tell. I mean, they, they almost have that Packard look to them. You know? They do, yeah. Well, in fact, Packard had a uh, lawsuit against Bu Buick because of, the, uh, because of the resemblance of the, uh, the radiator shell. And, uh, Is that right? Yeah. And they, and they won uh, afterwards. Uh, they had to change it. And they changed. This This was the same from, this was the year change, 1924, excuse me. It was also the first year for front wheel brakes. 24, 25, 26, and 27 had the same radiator shell and the same nose and fenders. And they, they pretty much finished the suit after that. And in 28, it, it got changed, the radiator shell design. And in 29, it was another year also because that's silver anniversary. But... Packard did sue Buick for that. Now, you, you, you specialize in Buicks yourself. Yes, now, uh, how do you find parts for cars like this? Well, you, you, you look in Hemmings, you look on the internet. I mean, we've been, I've been buying parts for uh, 25 years for these cars. I have quite a collection of cars and parts from, from uh, you know, 1910 to 1970 I have parts for. Wow. So a, lot of, uh, a lot of parts for the uh, 20s cars especially. We'll have to visit your shop one of these days. I'd like that. That'd be yeah. nice. It'd be a little different, right? That'd be great. Looking well, I want to thank you, Jesse. Uh, you know, you've been great talking about this car, and I'm sure you're going to have some fun here today. Yes, always do. It's a great show. They do a wonderful job here, does. They do. Mark does and everyone. It's, it's great. Yeah, he does excellent work. Right. Excellent guy, I tell you. We love coming here. I'm like a kid in a candy store. I don't know what to look at. Yeah. I hear you. <laughs> Thank here. you. You were Thank excellent. You. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you. Yes, we have Bruce McMillan here who owns this absolutely gorgeous 1929 Essex. And I got a feeling you know a little about this car, Bruce. Well, a little bit. I've had the car about uh, 10 years. Uh, and Essex are somewhat rare. They were started out in 1919 as the Essex Motor Work Company. And that went in existence until 1922, and then they got acquired by Hudson. And it became Hudson's low-end car to compete with the Model A. And as you know, Hudson went out of business in the early 30s. 
So there weren't many produced, and there aren't still many crews in the streets. And you're from Essex. I'm from Essex, Connecticut, and this is the only Essex located in Essex, Connecticut. <laughs> so I also have another interesting footnote uh, in Essex. In my, on my property, I have the only parking meters in Essex, Connecticut. So when you come visit me, you got to bring a lot of quarters. Wow. We'll have to remember that. Now tell me, do you come to this event often? I come every year to this event and usually bring a different car. This is the first time I've brought this Essex. It, this is one of the most outstanding uh, car shows uh, in the Northeast. And it also part about it is that it's for a great cause. This is a great facility and has a great mission. So it's nice to be able to support that. Oh, absolutely. Mark does an absolute great job. We love coming here. I'm like a kid in a candy store. I just don't even know what to look at next. You know? That's right. That's right. I mean, just look around. You see cars one of a kind. Now, tell me, what kind of engine does this car this have? have? This has a little six-cylinder engine, uh, 18 horsepower. The car will do about 50, 52. Uh, very strong runner. Uh, very dependable car. And what's interesting about it is it has a, little, a lot of interesting little niches that you don't see on a car uh, of this price range. This is about a $795 car new. So it wasn't a real expensive car. And as I said, it was really designed to compete with the Model A. Yeah, I was going to say the Model A's were about that kind of money, and uh, I always thought they were more money, but uh, th that surprised me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this was that, that entry, but of course they didn't do as well as Model A, and that's why you don't see so many Essex around today. Yeah, well, you have to be commended. The car is certainly gorgeous, and uh, I think you're going to... We did a little special treat for the show. I put roses in the flower vases. Oh. I don't know if you noticed, but just in case uh, any ladies come by, they can... Uh, they can see a rose. Well, there's something for everybody, right? <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> well, we want to thank you, Bruce. You've been excellent, and uh, I'm sure you're going to have some fun here today. Thank you. Nice so chatting much. with you. Nice chatting with you. you Enjoy the fun. show. Yes, we have Ken Stevens with us with this absolutely gorgeous 1942 Packard 110 convertible. And I got a feeling you know a little bit about this car, Ken. Yes, I do. Uh, my dad, uh, before his passing, had a car just like this one. And I've been searching for many, many years to find one, and I've had it for 15 years. Uh, the car initially was... Uh, sold to the original owner the day, or a day after Pearl Harbor Day. Wow. So it's got that kind of a historical background. Now, uh, where did you find this car? A very dear friend of mine in Westport, Connecticut. Uh, he and I knew many, one, one another for many, many years. And uh, he unfortunately had major surgery and disabled him to drive or walk. So he and I got together and I've owned it for 15 years now. The car is absolutely gorgeous, uh, uh, I'll tell you. And uh, the color, too. I like this car and this color. Manila cream. It's an original Packard color. Is this the first time you were at this event? First, I'm sorry to say yes. I don't know why I haven't been here, but I've attended so many, you know, you can't keep up with all of them. I understand you just had a birthday, is that right? Yes, I did. They tell me you turned 96, is that correct? Yes, it is. Wow. But I tell everybody I'm only 45, you know. <laughs> we want to keep that at the other a secret. <laughs> true, true. Well, I'll tell you, the car is gorgeous. I have to commend you. And I'm sure you're going to do very well here today, but I got a feeling you're going to have more fun. Well, I'm, I've enjoyed it immensely to this point. And I'm sure that uh, the rest of the day will be as interesting. Okay, good luck. Thank you for your interview, and happy birthday. Thank you very much. Nice talking to you. Nice talking to you, Ken. You are excellent. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yes, we have Joan Liska with us, who owns this absolutely gorgeous 1934 Ford Cabriolet, I believe. But I think you know a little bit about this car. Tell me, how'd you get this car? Uh, it was a barn find that uh, we got three years ago in Stafford Springs, Connecticut. 
Uh, and uh, when it came out, it was far from this condition. It was uh, a rust bucket. It was just about lost to uh, being able to be saved. But my husband is the restorer, and he saw the vision. He had the heart, and <laughs> he decided to take on this uh, incredible project. Uh, his capability, as you can see, is phenomenal. Uh, he's got about a year of actual time into the restoration, and uh, it is, in essence, a brand new 1934 Ford Cabriolet. I'll tell you, it is gorgeous. So, I mean, a year's time is not long to, to get a car in this condition. Well, he's uh, retired from his normal work, so he put uh, pretty much full-time effort into it when he was working on it. Is this your first uh, visit to this show? No, we've been before. Uh, we have uh, also at home a 1937 Studebaker Dictator 5A. Wow. That's yeah, that's a rare car. It is a very rare car. We've never seen another one like it in all the shows we've been to and all the years we've had it. We've had that one for about 30 years. Wow. Well, we'll have to talk about that someday at one of these shows. Love it. Now, uh, now tell me, this car. Um, it, it, you're in the Concours de Elegance, is, and that's separate than the regular show? Yes, it's a, by a special invite of the uh, people here at Klingberg uh, to identify special cars that uh, they you know, have taken a liking to. So they you know, honor us by giving us a, a beautiful uh, site up here uh, at Klingberg. Uh, along with, uh, they treat us very well with uh, nice accoutrements in the inside with you know, breakfast and lunch and things like that. So. Yeah, Mark does a great job, I'll tell you. We came last year, I was so impressed with the show, and, uh, and the Connecticut cars are something special, too. Oh, absolutely. I love this show. And, uh, yes, we are from Middletown, Connecticut, so uh, we didn't have far to come at all. Well, I hope... Uh, I believe you're going to do very well with this car, but I think you're going to have more fun. Uh, I'll enjoy it. Uh, I think the people will enjoy it. This uh, did get its first national award just uh, uh, about a month ago so when it, the first show went out to, uh, uh, to display it. It was up in Stowe, Vermont. Wow. Yeah, it is gorgeous. I, I'll tell you, I'd love to park this car right in my garage. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people would like to. It's a fun car. And uh, it's got a lot of, a lot of pep. Well, Joan, we want to thank you for your interview. You've been excellent, and good luck today. Thank you, Larry. I appreciate it. Thanks. Enjoy great. the show, everybody. <laughs>Yes, we have Tony Vespoli here, owns this absolutely gorgeous 1953 Buick Skylark. And I'll tell you, this car is something special, and I got a feeling you know a little bit about this car. A little bit, yes I do. Uh, they made 1,690 of these back in 1953. This was the 15th anniversary for Buick. The first V8 engine was put in, and uh, uh, the, the cost of the car back then was $5,000. Wow, that's, that's a lot of money. money back then. And you had no options. Everything was standard on the car except color. Power brakes, power steering, power windows, power antenna, everything was there. And they actually even engraved your name in the, in the uh, hub of the steering wheel. No kidding. Yes, they did. That was a... a, a and uh, you had three choices of colors in the, on the wheel wells, red, black, or white, depending on the color of the car. That was the only option the owner would have in, in uh, colors. And there wasn't that many choices of colors either, not in the regular 53s. Now, is this the real color? Yes, it is. It's called Victorian Maroon. But the, the original one, when the car was, came from uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania, it was black. And the gentleman that did the car, he decided to, to uh, move this color, which I'm happy because they didn't make too many in this color. This was an authentic 53 Buick color, Victorian maroon. Now, what was the production number on this car? 1,690. Wow. And the Skylark Club, which consists of 53s and 54s, to my knowledge, is about 200 of these cars registered all over the world. And that also includes 54s. So as far as the, the two of them go together, it seems as though the 53 was the more desirable one. But the 54 was built on a Century chassis. The 53 is built on a Roadmaster chassis. Oh, wow. Which engine does it have? Uh -oh, it has a 188 322 SID. So 
this car, when you bought it, there it was no options. No you options. just you just whatever it had, that was it. Except for the color, you could choose a color, but everything was just standard on the car. I understand you got a little history with the Buick Club. Is that right? Yes, I do. Unfortunately, I'm director of the Buick Club for the state of Connecticut. Yeah. Unfortunately. No, no. Fortunately, <laughs> yeah, only because there we got some great people in the in the club. And in another couple of weeks, Buick has its national show in Danvers, Massachusetts. And this car will be going up. It got uh, uh, what they call Bronze, Silver, Gold Award. Now I'm trying for Preservation Award. Wow. So hopefully I'll get that. Well, you need to be commended. The car Thank is you. really gorgeous. I appreciate that. Uh, I know you're going to do well here, but I think you're going to have more fun. I think, absolutely. That's what's everybody have. Did, did your trailer there? No, I drove it. That's half the battle. That's, That's it. Point. That's it. You got it. Thank you got to drive these cars. Absolutely. They're not. They're not trailer queens. No, absolutely. You're absolutely right. Thanks a lot, Tony. Thank you were great. I appreciate it. Yes, we have Karen and Mark Malaski that owns this absolutely gorgeous 1958 Etzel Citation, and I got a feeling, Mark, you just know a little bit about this car. Yeah, this is a 1958 Edsel Citation, which was the top of the line. It was a division of Ford Motor Company, like Mercury or Lincoln, and uh, very few were produced because of the bad economy in the late 50s, and it also got made fun of uh, for the horse collar grill. So uh, only 2,500 of these two-door hardtop Citations were built, and this is a real survivor. This only has 15,000 original miles on it, and it hasn't been restored. Wow, how'd you find this car? This was in a museum in Butte, Montana, and actually this was an eBay find, so I got very fortunate. Wow, I guess so. I mean, an original car is rare. Absolutely, and when it came off the trailer and I noticed the bolts underneath weren't even rusty, uh, I was big smile came on my face. <laughs> yeah, I, I could imagine. Now, which engine does it have? This has the E475, which is a 410 cubic inch and 355 horsepower, and it's a four-barrel carburetor. Oh, boy, this thing was a ground pounder. It goes pretty good, but it's a big, heavy car. Oh, they weighed more than a regular Ford? And I think this was over 4,000 pounds. This was a heavy car, yeah. It's a big, it's on a Mercury platform. This is uh, the bigger Edsel. Yeah, we uh, remember these cars I, you know, as I was growing up. You know, I really thought that the styling was great, you know. And, uh, but economically, I think that was the, the problem. Well, there were a lot of flamboyant cars made in 58, 59, and 60 with the big chrome. Now people go out of their mind when, when I pass them on the highway. Uh, they just <laughs> love it, you know. Oh, yeah. You don't see them. No, you don't see, uh, you don't see many, and I don't remember even seeing them in the 60s very much. They were taken off the road, and there wasn't a lot to begin with. Yeah, memory serves me. Is this an automatic? This is a push-button teletouch transmission, uh, only one ever on the steering wheel. Really? Yeah, the push buttons are actually in the center of the steering wheel. center of uh, the horn ring. And that also proved a little troublesome because it was electronic and not mechanical. So uh, several times uh, these Edsels were brought back to the dealers, and some people traded them in because of that problem. Oh, they, didn't, they didn't feel comfortable. No, and in 59 they deleted that option and went back to the, uh, the regular, the regular uh, on the column shift, yes. Well, I'll tell you, you need to be commended. You certainly keep the car very nice, and uh, I know you're going to do well here today, but i got a feeling you're going to have more fun. Well, thanks a lot. We enjoy showing it, and it's great. And thanks for having us on the show. You were great. Thank thanks you, so too, much. Karen. Nice you. Take care. Take care. Yes, we have Orlando and Nancy Amato with us who own this absolutely gorgeous 62 Thunderbird. And I'll tell you, there's some things on this car I've never seen before. Well, this is a unique Thunderbird, Larry. It's a 1962 M Series. There was only 17 of these made. This is, comes out with the three deuces, as you notice, as a three two-barrel two Holley carburetors and a special transmission, all a chrome package. And every nut and bolt on this car is back to complete restoration, back to original. Now, where'd you find this car? I found this car, believe it or not, in Enfield, Connecticut, sitting in a barn. When my brothers and I took it home and we put it in the garage, it was in the winter, 
It was a really cold day, so I had the heat on in the garage. And at 2 in the morning, my wife and I woke up with this awful smell in the house. And it was everything defrosting in here. I thought I was reading a Stephen King's novel as I took it apart with all the dead things in there. Oh, my God. But that was the start of it. And it was a five-year restoration. Uh, we did everything on this car ourselves except for the final painting. The engine, every piece of this car has been taken apart and rebuilt exactly back to factory specs. Now, the color, everything is like it was? This is Rangoon Red. It's the original color. I actually had Ford come out to certify that this is one of the 17 before I started investing the money into it. Now, how did they tell? By the serial number? They were able to look at the VIN number. It's, it's stamped three places on this car, two that are fairly obvious and one that's hidden. And the gentleman crawled through. He checked the transmission, which has a special number. He checked the heads, which have a special number. And it's certified as one of the 17 that Ford built in 62. Wow. Wow, I'll tell you, it is pretty. You ever drive it, Nancy? No, I don't. No? <laughs> You're afraid. <laughs> Anything to happen to it? Actually, I'm afraid to drive it myself. But we only take it to charity car shows. It only goes to, yeah. for very good causes. Like this, this is a very good cause, and we're very happy to be here to help just show off the cars. Where are you from? Guilford, Connecticut. Guilford. Okay. Because you got to remember what we see here today. What you've been looking at all day is American history. Every oh, business, absolutely. Every absolutely. even the foreign cars are part of our history. So this is what made our country. I think that's what got me into this hobby to originally was just the history was fasc fascinating to me. Absolutely. Well, the reason I restored this car is because when I was dating my wife many, many, many years ago, I had a 63 T-Bird convertible. And when we went to restore one, she says, I want to have one like we had when we were kids. So we found this, and I didn't expect to have to put as much work into this because of the rarity. The only thing that was different, the other one I had didn't have the tonneau cover over the back seat. So we couldn't try out the back seat like we did when we were kids. Okay. Well, thank God for that, right? <laughs> but I'll tell you, this uh, car is special. I mean, the color. I love the color. I can remember as a kid uh, working in a gas station, and there was a client that used to bring a car in like this. I used to wash it all the time. And he used to tell me, take it for a ride around the block oh, all the time. Wow. Excited. That was special to me, let me tell you. Well, I haven't washed this in five years. Really? This is all hand done with a spray. And then this will go home, go on a lift, and I sponge bathe the underneath of the car. Oh, my dear. I don't know if I'm ready for that, but I'll tell you, I need to commend you. The car is gorgeous. Thank you. And uh, I'm sure you're going to do well here today, but I think you're going to have more fun doing it. Absolutely will. And enjoy seeing all the cars and meeting guys like you. Yeah, this, to say the classic car world is alive and well is an understatement. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. You were excellent. Thank you. Thank you. you. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Thank you, Larry. Thanks a lot. You were great. Yes, we have Priscilla and Johnny Pascucci with us with this absolutely gorgeous car. And I got a feeling you know a little bit about this car. Sure do. This is 1932 Duesenberg Model J, custom built by LeBaron, nicknamed the Barrel Sides, one of five Barrel Sides in existence. Wow. It's been in my family for 50 years. My dad had bought this in 1960, and he restored it, and he gave it to me when I was about her age. And if she does good in school, she'll get it too. So what do you think of that, Priscilla? I'm excited. Yeah, this car is something special, isn't it? Yeah. Why don't you tell them um, what we did um, out Labor Day weekend out in Auburn, Indiana, with the year of the Duesenberg. 70 Model J's showed up. And what did we do out there with them? We drag raced, and we won a round, but then... He didn't want to beat up the car too much, so the second round, he slowed down, and then we lost. And we made a little history there, didn't we? There were uh, 72 Duesenberg, 71 Duesenbergs, and when they asked to take a picture of, uh, they asked to take uh, the owners to stand by their cars, 70 men went out and stood next to their cars, and one little girl went out to stand next to her car, and now she's in the Guinness World Book of Records. I that, yes, you are. See that? You're famous. Cool. Uh, yeah, these cars what are. What do you uh, name this car, Priscilla? 
the grass. Isn't it grasshopper? Grasshopper. So you wow. The grasshopper. Now, how did this color scheme come along? I mean, was this this wasn't the this color? It wasn't new, was it? This is a wild story. Like I said, there were five of these built. When I was five years old, my dad bought one of the five, and it was exactly this color. And he had a chance to sell it, and he had, he had a chance to sell it. He owned this one unrestored. And when he sold it, I kind of flipped out, jumped on the running board and started crying. And the new owner wouldn't let, uh, I wouldn't let the owner drive away in it. Well, he took a little walk, and my dad took me, and he said, I'll paint this one the same color and give it to you. And he kept his promise. So of the five there are, there's two painted this color. Duesenberg could be painted any color they wanted. This was, again, built for Esther DuPont from the DuPont family. And they ordered the Duesenbergs that had them built, just how you would build your house and paint your house the color you wanted. They're all special ordered. Wow, I'll tell you, the car is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you very much. I have to commend you. This is really something special. I know you're, I know you're going to do well here today, but I think you're going to have more fun. Yeah, we, we're here for the fun of it. We really don't care about trophies. I'm just glad to be here with my daughter. They're having a good time. Yeah. What do you think of that? You're going to have some fun here? Yep. Me and my friend, we're going to go off and get stuff to eat and drink and run around and play over at the Playscape and Bouncy House. Well, I'm if, sure... If you're ever around in Meredith, stop and I'll show you the whole collection. You know what? We're going to have we, to do that. we got a couple more Model J's home. Wow. We're going to have to spend some time over sure. and uh, see what you got over there. You're more than welcome. So what do you say, Priscilla? Thank you. Can they come? Yes. All right. Okay. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you. You've been excellent, John All and right. Priscilla. Pleasure meeting you, and good luck today. Good luck. Thanks a lot. You were thank excellent. you. As we show you some of the pictures of some of the cars we covered today, we come to the conclusion of our show, and I hope everybody has enjoyed it as much as we have producing it. It has been just one outstanding event. And we are also going to have another follow-on show of this beautiful Concours the Elegance here at the Kleinberg Family Center. So tune in next week for the next episode of Racing Action Today. This program is brought to you in part by SalCal Real Estate Connections. Thanks to the Race in Action Today crew, Dwayne Cody, Bill Majak, David Seidlinger, and Lisa Backus. And also we want to thank our home station, Nutmeg TV for all their support and all the great things they do.